We'd like to think that gone are the days when someone can be found guilty of a crime based on assumption or flimsy evidence. One of the breakthrough forensic techniques which has helped people gain justice is that of fingerprinting. The use of a person's unique fingerprints as a means of identification dates way back to prehistoric times when fingerprints were left on pottery, possibly as a maker's mark. They did not become a law enforcement procedure until the late 19th century. The now widespread use of fingerprinting dates back to a very strange story of not just one, but two William Wests at the start of last century. On May the 1st, 1903, an African-American man named Will West was brought to the prison at Leavenworth, Kansas in the United States. In those days, an extensive anthropometric system of identification was undertaken whenever a new inmate was admitted. The so-called Bertillon system involved five initial measurements, head length, head breadth, the lengths of the middle finger, left foot and forearm. Both full face and profile photographs, the original mugshots, were also taken to complete this system of record. Will West had been convicted of a minor crime, but upon arrival at the penitentiary was probably shocked to be informed that he was already in prison serving a life sentence for first degree homicide. The records clerk asked him, what now? What have you done this time? The confused West replied that it was his first time in prison and also his first ever conviction. Initially, the clerk was not fazed by his response, understanding that many offenders deny their crimes and claim innocence. He simply muttered an acknowledgement response to the man whilst continuing to look through his file. However, suddenly, he in turn was shocked to realise that the file in front of him belonged to another man still serving his sentence in the prison. Staring at the face in the file, the man whose image he saw seemed to have exactly the same facial features, similar bone structure, equal nose length, mouth shape and positioning of the eyes, as the individual sitting in the chair across from his desk opposite him. He made a double check and further concluded that all features were completely identical, as if a clone of the inmate was seated before him. Moreover, the man whose face completely matched that of the new arrival was also named William West. He was already in their offender database and behind bars in that very prison. Both men had been checked by the Bertillon identification system in the prison and been found to have the same name and, bizarrely, almost identical facial features. To the huge surprise of prison officials, the two men were completely different and unrelated individuals. Two years before that, in 1901, a convicted man named William West had been received at the same penitentiary in Leavenworth. In the usual formal procedure, an M.W. McClory, the records clerk, had taken his Bertillon measurements, compiled an archive file for the new inmate and informed him of the rules in the prison as well as giving him the number of his cell. The Bertillon system for offender identification was a procedure developed by the French handwriting expert, studious criminologist and biometrics researcher Alphonse Bertillon. From 1887, the protocol had been implemented throughout the United States penitentiaries to enable them to keep detailed report cards for the inmates. Initially, it was nothing more than a basic criminal mugshot, but with a detailed description of the person's face appended to it. The system had been working perfectly well like this, as inmates were well identified by their distinctive photo and full name only. However, its success was short-lived when, less than two decades later, a person emerged who bore a striking resemblance to another. In the authorities' eyes, the incident defied the unlikeliness of such an occurrence, taking place uncannily in the same prison and with the men having the same name to boot. The second William West had his picture taken and was measured using the Bertillon system like the first. As it happened, with the standardised checkup, a file with the name William West emerged from the prison's archives. Following this strange event, big changes were introduced in the penitentiary to avoid similar confusion in the future. The law enforcers heard that Bertillon had made another breakthrough in the advancement of dactyloscopy or fingerprint identification. 
he had identified and convicted a killer through analysis of his fingerprints. The prison replaced the old system, adopting this fingerprint identification protocol, which it viewed as a more reliable method for IDing inmates. It turned out to be very reliable when the two William Wests were tested in 1905 and, despite having the same anthropomorphic measurements, displayed entirely different fingerprint patterns. This story has been retold countless times and is considered by some a forensic classic. The legend of the William Wests was popularly regarded as marking the end of anthropometry and the triumph of fingerprinting as a reliable science. However, closer historical examination made by some researchers found the story to be perhaps a manipulated version of the truth. What was found to be at fault in the West case was not the actual anthropometric system, but the police officials of the day glossing over of a seven millimeter difference in the two men's foot length. This was a much larger deviation than what was accepted in the rigorous Bertillon system, and if taken into account, would have enabled the separate identification of the two men. It was as if racial stereotyping of the men as indistinguishable had got in the way of a proper analysis. We should, however, thank the uncanny resemblance of these two unrelated inmates and the strange story of their prison conjuncture. The astoundingly look-alike namesakes ushered in a new era in national database accuracy. As a result of their encounter, fingerprint analysis is now employed by every law enforcement agency in every country worldwide, helping to provide justice to innocent suspects as well as find the real lawbreakers. It has been suggested by commentators that the two men may have been identical twins separated at birth. However, the ages of the men do not seem to have been recorded and of course DNA profiling was not in practice for another 80 years. That aspect of the strange coincidence remains a historical mystery.